That's that's tough. That's really this really one tough. actually hurts. I know. Yeah, this one hurts definitely. <laughs> this is a hard matchup. The only thing that's making me feel better is that I didn't make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Xavier. Hi, I'm Bree. And welcome to Melody Fighter Barwin. The extremely subjective Eurovision Opinion Tournament. We are up to round three, episode five where we're up to our quarterfinals. It's very exciting. We've eliminated more than half of the competition now and we're up to our final eight. This is where it's going to get interesting and passionate and uh, where our friendships are all going to fall apart. So it'll be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, helping us keep our friendships together is our lovely guest today, Emily Jacka Lawrence. Hi, Emily. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> um, we're very excited to have you here. So, Emily, we have asked all of our guests this so far. Mm -hmm. What is Eurovision? Well, um, <laughs> okay. Well, seeing as I've never watched any Eurovision except for the clips uh, that you have provided me with, I would say that Eurovision is a song contest. <laughs> I feel like it's where every country who's involved uses like what is I don't know their idea of maybe their ideal pop rock ballad whatever and presents it to the rest of the world I guess so do you have a favorite Eurovision song ever I, I don't even know because ABBA won right when they won and I don't know I should have looked that up what their song was that they won with but I I love ABBA Let's have a look at where the standing is at the moment. We've got Ukraine, Lithuania, Bulgaria, Malta, Australia, Belgium, Israel, and Iceland. From the actual top 10 of Eurovision, we have kicked out Russia, who came third. Um, we're very sorry, Sergei. Uh, France was kicked out pretty early. Um, and Poland um, never really stood a chance for us, I believe. <laughs> so we will uh, have a, a moment of silence for those that we have um, kicked out and are no longer in the tournament. And that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, well, let's go to our first matchup. We have Ukraine 1944 versus Lithuania's I've Been Waiting for This Night. Uh, so we have Ukraine's 1944 versus Lithuania's I've Been Waiting For This Night. Uh, two really different songs. We say that every time, but they're all really different. I'm looking at a couple of different things with these two numbers. They both tackle some of the same things in a really different way. I find, in terms of the visuals, uh, when Lithuania have really... They've got some really cool visuals, but they're all really conspicuous mm -hmm. or really based around... The, the graphics a lot of the time, all the visuals in the Ukraine entry seem to supplement the song rather than a, a feature. So even though there's some really big graphics, big moments where the like tree of light grows out of her and comes back in at the end, we've got some really striking lighting, like that cube at the start with the lasers mm. and the smoke. It's, mm. But it just frames her. It's not about like, look, I'm in a cube. But uh, yeah, I think I think that's what Donnie would have done if he had the exact same lighting cue at the start with, <laughs> with the, the three lasers making a cube around him. I would have been here for it. And I would have been here for it. And I would have loved it. <laughs> well, I'm not saying it wouldn't fit the song, but that's what it would have done. Every single Eurovision song is really heavily choreographed when it comes to the camera movements. That's one of the mm. to make it one of the best TV shows out there. It's really slick. But um, uh, Donnie's 
found my camera stuff. Always, always a little bit. <laughs> like, oh. But um, uh, also, it suits the song because it's very pop and life and trying to bring in the audience. But um, uh, 1944 brings the audience in with the emotion. Speaking of the emotion, there's so much emotion in 1944. It really, like, it really impacts me. It isn't a song I would listen to just for fun. Yeah, it's one of those you have to be in a mood for it songs. If you just take the backing tracks, just the arrangements, of the songs 1944 is really quite simple it's mostly low synth sounds um that uh the as, as it is, like a nose flute or a traditional flute sound and the really fast synthetic drums <laughs> lot more going on in I've Been Waiting For This Night. There's heaps of synth sounds, it's stronger drums, it's got to, they both have just as much range in terms of the arrangement as well. They both have really soft moments, really big moments, which is cool. I think you're being very mean to Donnie and you can speak uh, to my lawyer, um, but... <laughs> I disagree in one way with the lighting. I don't think it's as jarring as you're talking about. I think it adds to his performance and it draws you in, particularly that moment where I've written Socks and Explodes, which is a very awful life explaining it, but when it comes in and then the lighting explodes out, I think it is impactful for the sound of the music and I think it's getting you ready for a moment that you're excited about and then it's enjoyable when it happens because it's drawing you in. Having said that, I think the lighting I like most in 1944 is the beam lights that, that come around the stage because it reminds me of, of prison bars, mm. um, particularly with the content of the song being about the, the displacement of the people. And I really like that visual. I think both have very generic um, Eurovision themes and that's not a bad thing. But I think they're two very distinctive themes of song. One theme being Donnie's been waiting for this night. There's a very big subsection of songs that are about nights waiting for that moment. Eurovision being the moment. It's the night that we love. That kind of thing. This is our night. Which is not a bad thing, but it's very quintessential. Makes you want to be involved in it. And Jamala's being the the emotional um, song about the connection to her people. So it's very hard to compare, which is why I hate you, Zay, for making me do it. Um, (laughs) I do think maybe for me it just comes back to what the song does energy-wise for me. Or as I think listening to Donnie's, it makes me excited. It, it gives me energy. It makes me interested. Whereas Jamala can feel quite draining, which is which is amazing that she's been able to do that. But I can feel exhausted. And I don't know if I would be then actively choosing that. I would have to say what a comparison. Having not watched any others, I don't know if this is like a usual thing where it's like you've got like one side which is so pop driven, catchy, you get the beat in there, and then you've got something that's so story-driven like Ukraine. The lighting was definitely something that I noticed straight away. 1944 is a lot more driven on what the story is about and creating some images behind her. Sometimes I watched it and I was like, okay, yeah, cool, that's part of the story, that lighting, it's not just for you to look at. But compared to um, Lithuania, which has like a lot of, yeah, leading you into what could be the next beat or moment in the song and getting you ready for that. And I can definitely see that. I didn't find it integral to the storytelling. It was, I don't know what you'd call it, Zabe, you probably know, like literal dancing to the lyrics. Like when you say the word heart and you go like that, like there was a lot of that in the other one, whereas Ukraine was so much of like, this inner monologue she could get across her story to the audience but it was very much she's in this bubble telling her story and she wants you to get that story and I definitely feel the difference between the two I don't know whether it meant that he worked he had to work harder to get the story like to get the audience involved because it's not this like heartfelt 
something for a minute there. Although I did write in my notes the soprano bits for the um, for the Ukraine at the end when I first watched it, I was like, and I wrote strong soprano. Ha ha! I did really like the bit with the the jail bar lighting that I assumed was jail bar lighting. I really enjoyed her costume as well. And his costume suited his song. I guess it wasn't as out there as some of the others, but I, it suited the song. When it comes to the feeling of it, and I know Brie, you said it, that, like, that feeling exhausted, I think that's where it comes down to the difference to me because it's like one song is like really important and really meaningful and the other song is like, yeah, let's have good times forever, guys. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, that's where, where that song becomes really important uh, to me because it's this beautiful story. It really means something. It means something specific. And I'm not sure if how specific I've been waiting for this night gets. Comparing them both vocally to they're both really strong singers. They really pack in 1944, the huge range, not just range in terms of mm. musical range, but range in stylistically as well. There's all these like the little runs and the, the sort of traditional style that breakdown in the middle that's the uh, before the big climax. And that, like Emily said, the soprano stuff at the end. Donnie has some really good pop vocals through. It's just like mm. pop through and through, but actually really shows some range. start of our voting, I'm going to send my vote to Ukraine. Yeah, look, I'm going to uh, get the ire of a lot of people, including very close friends, but I'm sending Donny through. I just, maybe I'm just still waiting for a good night because we're in isolation and I'm just longing for a dance party. <laughs> Awesome. All right, so we're in a tiebreaker. Emily, uh, your first match and the pressure's already on. I know, right? I think I'm going to have to go with 1944. Yeah! <laughs> I'm sorry, Brie. <laughs> I, you drew that out with perfection. I, my heart was going. Like I was like, I was really into it. Which way is she going? I don't know. In another life, she hosts a reality TV show and she would oh. have said, um, and we'll tell you after the break. Oh, yes. I threw my remote at the TV. <laughs> Wow, what a tense voting uh, atmosphere. Much like the real Eurovision voting, except it doesn't take two hours after the competition is basically done. We're moving on to our second match of round three, Bulgaria versus Malta. love was a crime or if we could walk on water i'm interested to see where we go with this one though i do have a feeling i know where it will this one seems pretty evenly matched i think both of them are just vocally powerhouses as we've discussed before i have no musical ability so i don't understand technically but both of them just sound like they just have incredible voices and they just belt it out from the start um i think what really did it for me between the two songs is just looking at the first 15 seconds of the performance. With Polly and Love Was a Crime, it was on her face. She has that beautiful moment where she has her eyes closed and she has this smile that makes you just feel so comfortable with her as a performer. Like you're just so there involved, this beautiful look on her face and it's just gorgeous. Whereas when we're looking at Malta, have that weird face projection. It actually takes about 32 seconds, including the, the um, titles, but it takes 32 seconds till we get on our performer. She is a goddess, so why you would waste any time on something that wasn't her face, I don't know why. Like, she is just 
dripping in gold and she is spectacular while being so heavily pregnant. I think it's just a wasted opportunity to not spend more time on her. Both of them have, I have an issue with, which is the background performers. Um, obviously in Polly, she's got her background vocalists. With Malta, they have the dancer and I have the same problem with both of them, which is either use them more or use them less. With uh, Bulgaria, they it was a wasted opportunity to have them just walk at the end at the end. I don't think it added anything. I think they should have used them a bit more throughout it. Maybe made them light up as well, I don't know. Or don't bother using them because she could have had that whole stage without it. That being said, it might have been a choice to give those incredible vocalists their time to shine to be on the screen because um, I think the backing vocals in that song are one of the best of the competition. So they probably do deserve to go out and get a bow. And I think with Malta, the dancer, either give him more lights, maybe dress him in a colour that's not black. So he stands out more or use him less. Because sometimes I was like, oh, is he hiding? Nope, no, he's supposed to be there. Nope, that's, you know, and you're not seeing the cool stuff he's doing. But both women are spectacular. I did really enjoy that bit where she has her eyes closed at the start because obviously she knows the camera is on her and she just wants this big reveal of her eyes to be open. And I liked it because she did have that smile, but I also had a little giggle. In the dancing section, she only brought it in in the chorus of her dancing. And sometimes I actually thought that took away a little bit from what she was singing because she wanted us to like look at her do her cute little moves, which she did execute, but I did um, enjoy listening to the song. I liked her costume. I just didn't like the color. That neutral, nudie, whatever. I'm not sure if that's the kind of color that it is. I would have loved to have seen that in a different color. For me, the malt, both of them are really strong singers but when you see that face on the ground at the start that's the vibe I was expecting and then she comes out in this massively gorgeous big gold dress and I just wasn't expecting that vibe I really enjoyed that gold lighting that they used I don't know something about it I was like yeah I love that I couldn't even tell that she was pregnant, didn't know that Brie, but now that makes sense. There was too much sparkles, I couldn't even see it. But I did really think they were both really strong vocally and I did enjoy comparing them both to each other. Yeah. And you make a really interesting point that it's almost like the two starts should have been swapped because... Yeah, um, oh, totally. Yeah, because Polly with Bulgaria is edgy. You know, she's got the angular, she's got the funky hair. She probably could have, have pulled off that um, techno uh, vibe on the ground because hers was all that kind of thing. And whereas maybe with Malta the other way because she was the beautiful, you know, goddess perhaps, it should have been the other way around. I agree with both of you about the face in and in Malta, the, the face on the ground and the dancer. I think it's one of those cases of they've added a dancer because they wanted to add an element rather than the dancer being conceptually something. It's very good though. Like clearly there's sort of those shoulder stands and the little like sort of flippy things, amazing. And the face on the ground just seems unnecessary at the start. And again, it, it doesn't match. It doesn't have the same look. Um, which is a bit jarring. I'm loath to disagree with one of our guests, but I did want to disagree with one point. I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> um, I won't hold it against you. Oh, the dancing, yeah. In the choreography for Bulgaria, I thought it was really smart that the choreographed portions were when we moved away from English. If some people disengage when they don't understand the lyrics, which isn't something that I... I think I, I love when there's languages that aren't English. It's too much English in a European song contest. But um, I think it was a clever point to have something that brings people in when they don't understand the language. So I thought it was clever. I wasn't sure where the I just couldn't understand her. But now that I know specifically that she is not speaking English, that makes a lot more sense. You don't see us while we're watching back to the songs. But um, every time we listen to the song, Brie and I are like... Hey, me stand like we're doing the we do the full curry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we both fully do it. <laughs> um, so I re I'm really into the curry. <laughs> the look overall was really it was more polished and consistent in the Bulgarian entry than it was to the Maltese entry. They stuck to that static pulse and the the like blues blacks static. That's it. But there was a bit more variation in the Maltese entry. But I don't think it was cohesive extra stuff. I think it was just a bit 
uh, just lots of things. Props to the Bulgarian entry and the designer for really sticking to that one look and it really fit the music. There's those pulses that were really cool and it matched the costume. I guess it was gold in the costume and gold in the projection uh, in the screens of the Maltese song as well. Ira comes out just on top when it comes to vocals. They're both incredible and I think it's more just there's more opportunity in the melody to show off. Neither of them had, I think, a single moment where they, their vocals weren't on point the whole time. With the costumes, it's whether you prefer an elegant costume or a cool costume, because both are lovely and hard to compare the, the two different styles. As a pregnant woman, looking just powerful and strong, it's just, it's so exciting. I lo I'd love to see that because so many people be like, a pregnant person, they hide them away. This is just on show. They, were, they weren't disguising it. I see there were lots of like, you know, um, sparkly things on it. But if you're hiding something, you don't put sparkles on it. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was really, uh, really into that. But um, we we're talking about that, like getting pumped up. I think if we were comparing Bulgaria and Lithuania right now, I would dance to this song. This song would get me on the dance floor. I'm not sure if um, I've been waiting for this night would get me on the dance floor. I think you just need to stop bringing up Lithuania um, because <laughs> just the crux of what you're saying is if Malta had a shirtless drummer, we would have a different story right now. Probably. Yeah, it needs more shirtless drummers. Though it didn't work out for Ireland in, um, what, what year was it? Was it 2015 with um, Only Love Survives? It was an excellent yeah. song. Lots of shirtless yeah. drummers came last somehow. <laughs> I think there was too many. I too think that was the problem. Many. Yeah, we needed more uh, attention on it on a single drummer. Yeah. Okay. Fair, 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 fair. Uh, Emily, do you want to kick us off with the vote? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to have to go with my gut and I'm going to give my vote to Bulgaria. Excellent. Um, Brie. Where's your vote going on this one? I was pretty sure where it was, but now I'm not so, not so sure. I think if I have to choose, I would rather be a criminal than a person who walks on water, so it's going to fall down. Excellent. Well, my vote's unnecessary, but just so we know, I, my vote's going to Bulgaria as well. So that's unanimous. Let's get ready for our next match, three of four. It's our home country, Australia versus Belgium. already so we're jumping into Australia's Sound of Silence versus Belgium's What's the Pressure? This one's really tough for me I love both of these songs a lot the last two I've known pretty much straight away which I want to vote for going in this one's a bit more tough for me so we'll see what happens. These two are like my two favorites this is going to be a really tough decision I don't know how I will vote if it will be based on like full performance or if there's something in it that will definitely tip me over the edge. Dami, I really love that song and I really love how, I don't know if it's because it's Australia, but it gave me a little bit of tingles, especially at the end, her, and her vocal energy and her commitment to just the song and what she's singing and how much she gives to the song. I don't know, that really got me and I really enjoyed that. What's the pressure is just like a, on banger um i just i love it I, like when i first watched it and they all came out and she's there and she's got her dancers and her backup singers and i was just like oh my god i love this one and i love it because her whole vibe i'm just really digging she's just got her costume just suits the song so much she's in flat shoes she's not wearing heels i mean she could have worn heels and been in the same costume and it wouldn't like it would have still looked great but because i, I don't know whether it's because she's not singing this big power ballad that she can kind of like enjoy it a bit more. I don't know, enjoy herself a bit more. The only thing that got me with um, Sounds of Silence is she spends so much time sitting on that box and I'm like, she would have so much, I mean, it's okay when you don't 
when you're just looking at her from the waist up. But when you just see her sitting there with her legs crossed, her, she could have so much more power, which is like the song has so much power when she's standing there, like giving it with her. Mm. I love them both. This is going to be very hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm nervous about this one. This one's tough. Um, there's things I like about both and not much I don't like about both. <sighs> to really compare them, and I, I'm, I'm making myself be tough here, yeah. <laughs> be strong. Belgium had the better staging in general. It's got some really great Corey. It's really up there. There's a lot going on, but it's all really appropriate. The Australian staging takes a long time to get going, like you said. But also the second verse, I just don't know if this stuff is necessary. I felt like it was one of those things where it's like, we need to do something, let's interact. And oh, the winner last year had some really cool interactions with graphics, so let's do that. Not all of the things that had interactions with graphics felt that like that this year, but a lot did, and this is one of them, unfortunately. Tide waves of tears are crashing No one here to save me drowning Cause baby I love the sparkly of the costume, of both their costumes. Yeah, Belgium had the better staging, but did Australia need much staging because it's such an epic song and so well performed is my question. I don't know the answer. I think Dami brought potentially the best vocals of 2016. Her technique is amazing. And if you know what to look for, you can see it in terms of anchoring and bringing energy with the arms. She's either doing this or this, and that's like a like a pump up, bring up the energy thing, and then she leans back to get the lats involved. I really enjoy that there's actual instruments in What's the Pressure, in the, the brass and the saxes, I, that's so cool. Uh, so much of the contest these days is all synth so I, I really appreciated that it was legit instruments and those brass lines so cool. one exciting thing that in the live contest i thought was really clever and really grabbed me the recording of sound of silence she never strayed from the melody in the recording but live the second chorus goes higher and the the end is all this belting that is not in the recording that's really exciting to listen to. I thought that was clever. I had the same thing down. There's two points in there, and I don't know music, but there's two points in there that she does something different to the recording, which I think is very, very clever um, because it's something people weren't expecting. It's very hard to compare these two because they're two of my all-time favourites, and I just love them so much. I agree with everything that you guys have said um, that the Australian uh, stage presentation was not great. I think both performers really were hard on themselves in the fact that they made it so difficult to sing. One of them sitting down for half of the, the thing, and I know that's incredibly difficult. I can't sing, but I know that's hard. So that one said, we're just going to make them sit down the whole time. And the other one said, oh, I'm going to dance the entire time and not stop. So both of them have given themselves such a hard task and I think both accomplished it with flying Belgian flag colours. So, you know, they both get really good points. I like Dami's costume when she's moving, but when she's sitting down, it has this weird angle that makes it look like it's almost cutting into her and it's like, I can't sing because I don't know. It doesn't need the weird minority report thing. We've discussed that before. And I do keep coming back to... Is it a good song or is Dami just spectacular that I think it's a good song? I'm not saying it's bad, but I still just don't know. I just think if she sang any of these other songs, which she could, she could sing every single one of these, I think, and still be brilliant, would I be picking it as my top one? And when I look at the Belgian one, I think every second of that song is interesting whether it's what she's singing, whether it's what the backing people are doing, whether it's the Cory, whether it's how they look, that if you stopped at any moment in that three minutes and had someone come in, it would be interesting. This is the best use of multiple people on stage, probably out of any in the whole competition with Belgium. They want to be there, they're enhancing it, they're included, they're not trying to hide them, but there's still moments where Laura shines on her own. 
um, when she walks out to into the stage, it's still just all on her. And I still have confidence that if she didn't have backing singers and dancers, she could have still held that song on her own. And apparently, Laura is an accomplished boxer. Yeah. Really? That's awesome. Laura! That's my tidbit. And I just think she is fabulous. Um, and I think she just is hair goals. Uh, particularly with you, Emily. I think yep. you have very much Laura hair going on and I <laughs> am extremely jealous. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like the song so much. <laughs> I'm going to start the voting. Calling it. This is really hard. And I'm calling it. Um, I am going to vote for Belgium. I'm sorry, darling. I love you. It's so hard. I know. It's so hard, but I think I just, I just loved it. And I'm just going to vote Belgium. I just loved it. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's intense. Uh, sorry to our fellow Australians, that's Belgium through. My vote is for Australia. Um, uh, I know that doesn't mean much right now. We love you, Dami. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, wow. Well, I'm behind you, Dami. <laughs> um, <laughs> But two really great songs, really tricky. Um, I thought we were going to see Australia in the uh, the semi-finals at the very least, but um, congratulations to Belgium through to our semi-finals. That's that's tough. That's really this one actually hurts. I know. Yeah, uh, this one hurts definitely. This is a hard matchup. Yeah, it feels the only, wrong. <laughs> the only thing that's making me feel better is that I didn't make it happen. <laughs> 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 we only have one more match left of this round. We're going into Israel versus Iceland. We are up to the last match of the day. It's Israel versus Iceland. We have Made of Stars versus Hear Them Calling. This combo is interesting because Made of Stars wasn't really on my radar until we got to this competition. Um, it's, it's growing on me, which is cool. I, I never hated it, but it, I just think maybe where it was in the competition was next to ones I, I like more that, that grabbed me a bit more. Um, and Iceland, I... I have this underdog thing with it because it didn't qualify and I loved it. And maybe if it had qualified and just done all right, I, I wouldn't be gunning for it as much. So it's evened out for me, these two. I thought it was going to be a bit easier, but nope, none of this is easy. <laughs> what I've discovered, we talked about it last time we talked about Israel, is the um, yet another face, but where hypnotize me and the, the light shoot out, the first shot, is in that aspect ratio, same, same as what you're looking at now on the computer, where they just go out of the screen. But the second shot, uh, clearly the second time they used that echo um, starlight face was meant to be viewed from the same angle because it cuts out on the floor screens and either they've changed the camera angle in the choreography of it last minute or they've forgotten to adjust it or something and it just seems like a weird oversight that I have to like grab onto at this point in this tournament because we have to be that picky because everything's fantastic here otherwise the design of have made of stars is beautiful and it matches the beautiful lights in the audience they really use that effectively panning from the the shining lights in the audience through to the shining lights of the floor onto hovi just really lovely it's just really feeling it and then i go why is there a spinny hoop what he doesn't need that to back up all it does is make me look at like ooh spinning when he's singing beautifully and so emotionally connected. Uh, I do appreciate the frozen Elsa star that he's standing on top of, as Bree is demonstrating with her hair today as well. <laughs>
The other thing I noticed, another oversight, is we can catch the change of hoops. Obviously, they have to do it quickly, and it's probably the safest place for it. But the fact that you see that hoop sitting on the ground, and then they're in the other hoop, is just like, I don't want to see that. It's like when you see a, a camera operator, which doesn't happen often in Eurovision because they're so slick, but every time you catch it, you're like, ah, dang. Iceland, I'm impressed by because the music and lyrics are only by Greta and she performed it as well. The graphics are obviously more interesting because there's so much going on in Hear Them Calling, but is it too much? That I think is the point we're going to hit today. I love that she melts. We haven't mentioned that yet, that she's spinning and then suddenly she melts like, what? It was just a screen her. And unlike Malta, it's the exact same look, the exact same hair, the exact same costume. So it's a bit more of a surprise. It's a cool motif. Da, na, na, da, 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 na, na, na. Is in my head, but it is in every single part of the song, but it does help it be an earworm. Again, I've not helped myself. I've painted myself into a corner of, I like a lot of them. Here's a couple of things I don't like. I can answer that question. Yes, it's too much. Okay, great. <laughs> My main time that question is too much. And I think she is spectacular. And if you look at all she has to do in that song, she's got to start down, she's got to come up, she's got to hit this mark, she's got to grab this hand, she's got to be in the right place. This hand's coming next. Like she has so many marks to hit. And she hits nearly every single one of them. Mm. There's a couple of ones that don't seem to quite match, and I don't know if that's her or the graphic or the camera or whatever. I just think, like, that was her performance doing 97,000 things in her head, and she's still knocked it out of the park. And I think with her being in the black and all the graphics being black as well, it can be a bit messy. So the answer is yes, it is too much. But on the flip side, I agree with what you were saying with Israel. Like, yeah, the best... Um, visual of that song is the audience using the lighting from the audience to make it look like the, the starry night which I think is beautiful and I think that's the best part and then we come back to the weird form thing which just makes me feel like they're going to run him over. I do like when they look through the hole which is a, a very almost tacky Eurovision moment like come with me through the hoop like we're over here but I like that because it's really the only moment where they're interacting with him. Up until before that, they're just in the background. There's no interaction. And as much as I was complaining with Malta and her dancer, which I didn't like, at least they interacted. This could be almost like he didn't know they were on stage. That they, they just ran on. They were stage invaders and they just so happened to make it look like it worked. But I just think the, the, the orb brought nothing to it. I don't know. It's really hard because Israel is just this emotional, beautiful connection, which is very interesting compared to the year before performance, which was Golden Boy, which is one of my all-time favourite Eurovision songs. Um, and then Iceland feels like what would happen in my brain if I ate wild mushrooms from Iceland and that's what would happen and I would be so happy to be there for that. To your point, Dave, I just looked and um, one of maybe the reasons why Israel didn't pop in your mind is Polly from Bulgaria was next. So he was stuck between Italy. Wow. So Italy was before him and um, Bulgaria was after him. Yeah. So he thought he, had, he pulled a bad place. So Emily, last thoughts of the day. Where are you sitting with Israel mm. and Iceland? Interesting. Okay. I think I'll start with Iceland. I liked that at the start you didn't, you were just listening to the song, you didn't necessarily need to see anything and then the weird scraping of the floor with the tassels came. I really liked the song. I just didn't know if all of it was necessary. I get that maybe she's at one with the birds now in the costume. I really liked her singing and I really liked her consistency throughout the whole song. When the lights do come up on her, she is a little bit too much. I don't know, it's just like, it's too intense. In comparison of the visuals, you didn't necessarily need to watch Made of Stars to feel what he was singing or to understand it and to get the emphasis of the song. Whereas with all the hand gestures in the background, I mean, it did add to what she was feeling and you could kind of get her 
energy and what she was feeling a bit more, but I don't know whether that took away or you actually needed that to get the rest of the song, if you know what I mean. I do agree with the use of the dancers. I did see them that moment when they come out of one of the circles and I saw it in the background and I wasn't like, oh, I was like, oh, were we meant to see that? I was thinking while I was watching it, maybe I would have preferred if they were on the silks, like if there was two stars on silks instead of that. I think my favourite bit of the whole song is the star that has the light around it at the end and he's doing this while it's moving in the background. <laughs> I'm not sure if he like if that was like a choreographed move or if he was just doing it while he was playing the song. <laughs> but I did it and I really loved I really loved his voice and how he executed the song. It was really cool. I'll start off the voting so my vote in this one, perhaps controversially, is going to Iceland. I almost loathe to vote against Israel, but let's see what happens next. Uh, Brie, what are your thoughts? Oh, this is so hard. I love them both so much. And the issues I have with both of them is the performance. I'm going to give my vote to Israel, so it's Emily's fault if we pick wrong. <laughs> Emily, yet again, the tiebreaker. Um, a lot of pressure on this guest today. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I was kind of maybe leaving it as to how I felt, you know, after hearing all the points. Oh, no, I think I'm going to... The suspense is killing me! Sorry, I think... Oh, uh, I think I'm going to have to go with... Israel. Wow. <laughs> I'm so sorry I did it again, Save. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, this one I, I, I can respect a lot. Well done. <laughs> um, I, I think I, even though I did vote for Iceland, I think I'd be sad to see um, uh, Made of Stars go, um, but I had to vote with my heart. But Totally respect this one. I'm not as heartbroken as Dami being gone from this contest already. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, fellow Australians. Um, the ESC fan club is going to have a have a head spree. Uh, <laughs> we're both members. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. So moving on to round four, the semi-finals. Tune in next week as our semi-finalists go head-to-head. -head. Ukraine versus Bulgaria and Belgium versus Israel. Thank you so much for joining us. Do you have anything you want to plug? If you do like an epic performance, maybe uh, once isolation is over, you should come and see Fantasy. I would be involved in that along with some other attitude performers and I think you should come and see it because we can make it as epic as Eurovision and if you love Eurovision well this is 80 so it's not the same thing but you know it's just gonna be just as epic. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments who you would have voted for. And if you enjoyed this video hit the like button. And please consider subscribing. See ya. Bye bye.